Well, have you heard about Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe? The abbreviation is OSCE. Well, uh, I just heard that the uh, Russian Duma or Russian Parliament on 21st of February is going to vote uh, Russian Federation out of this regional, the biggest regional and security organization. So, organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe has been established back in 1975 by signing of uh, so-called Helsinki Final Act, which, among other things, uh, guarantees uh, the borders. Basically, it means uh, you cannot uh, change borders uh, by using force. Well, in the past two years, we realized that the borders can actually be changed by force. And if uh, the country which does that is nuclear power or also nuclear power with uh, membership in the United Nations Security Council, the world would uh, say, mm, we, we don't like it, but what to do? In, back in 1975, uh, why that organization was established? It was a Cold War. It's a result of a, a whole set of uh, negotiations and uh, diplomatic uh, events after Cuban Missile Crisis, where the world was uh, at the brink of uh, uh, mutually assured destruction. So, uh, at that time, politicians uh, also have been very good diplomats and leaders. Today, heads of states are more bureaucrats. I don't see many of them having any vision, a simple understanding what is going on and uh, what may happen after their decisions or lack of decisions. It started as a conference on uh, security and cooperation in Europe and uh, sometimes 1994 at Budapest uh, it changed its, its name and status from the conference into international organization. So, its first mission was in my country, Bosnia-Herzegovina, and it was included uh, into a peace agreement. So, gradually, uh, uh, Article 3 of that uh, Dayton Peace Agreement, uh, during its implementation, uh, OEC handed over uh, its uh, competencies to local authorities, and this is basically the practice of uh, the OEC in every country uh, where they have uh, field missions. To uh, start a project or some program and involve local authorities 
for their own benefit, not for the benefit of, of the OSCE, and uh, give ownership uh, to local authorities. Okay, with some monitoring and evaluation uh, mechanisms. And now, uh, Russian Federation uh, wants to step out from this organization. Okay, we understand uh, that uh, since uh, open aggression of Russian Federation against Ukraine, Russian Federation was uh, heavily criticized uh, for, you know, aggression and uh, non-compliance with the uh, core values of democratic uh, societies and so on and so forth. But I would kindly remind uh, the audience that, uh, you know, uh, back in 75, the signatory of uh, uh, one of the 30 uh, countries that signed uh, uh, Helsinki Final Act was Soviet Union, which was not role model of uh, democracy. So, at that time, for uh, other world leaders, it was not a big issue, lack of dem democratic standards, you know, in in the East. Now it's big deal. <laughs> and this sounds like, uh, you know, uh, saying goodbye to the OSCE, the organization where I worked for more than 19 years. Well, too bad. Now, let's talk about another issue, United Nations. United Nations Security Council will not uh, do anything about uh, implementation of uh, uh, the measures uh, ordered by International Court of Justice in case of uh, South Africa versus uh, Israel, where South Africa uh, accuse Israel of committing genocide. So, uh, the ICJ, International Court of Justice, uh, ordered measures because they found the, the plausible possibility that uh, Israel is committing or can commit genocide in Gaza. Why I say it's not going to do anything? Just because of one country, United States. Yeah, these days, even Biden uh, criticized Israel. He said they are over the top. But it didn't prevent him to send more money uh, to Israel to continue what they are doing over the top. Hmm. Good. And what else happened? You remember uh, those who watched my uh, podcasts uh, I had a guest uh, from one security expert from Egypt, and he said uh, about uh, Egypt and Turkey, it's like uh, uh, 
geopolitical game between those two countries. Paraphrase uh, something like uh, uh, nothing personal, just business. Uh, it doesn't matter which country instead of Turkey or uh, Egypt would be, they would have issues uh, because of, you know, uh, Mediterranean Sea and uh, big pockets of uh, natural gas under its bed. So for some 12 years uh, Egypt and Turkey didn't have any any uh, diplomatic uh, uh, communication or you know at least uh, at the level of uh, heads of states. But yesterday uh, Erdogan and uh, LCC, presidents of Turkey and, uh, and Egypt, they met. And they met because of Gaza, the situation in Gaza. So when, uh, when I was saying that uh, many countries will uh, rethink their positions, this is happening. And it will happen more in the future. Today I was asked, uh, are we getting closer to World War Three? I couldn't lie, you know. My my opinion is okay. I hope we we will not uh, enter that madness, but we are very close. What do you think? What we are going to do? The whole world is upside down. There is no diplomacy, and uh, even those former uh, fora for diplomatic communication are just about to be shut down. I will not talk negatively about organization where I spent almost two de decades, but there are also uh, issues which uh, contributed to the situation where we are now. A lot of opportunities have been missed because of wrong people at wrong positions. I will not say more about this, but do you see any solutions? So, see you.